Kathleen Zavaka. Um, she is the head of the Continuing Professional Education um, Division here at NJIT. We've been doing this now for a number of years, um, having a summit uh, on manufacturing, and this is it today. And I'm very sorry for the rain or any of the traffic woes you may have experienced getting here, but welcome. So, as Ray said, I am the Lieutenant Spock. I'm the Associate Vice President for Continuing Professional Education. And I also have the distinct privilege to be overseeing the hosting of three of New Jersey's talent networks, including Manufacture New Jersey. Um, this talent network was cre created by our state in 2011, and we are co-hosting this event for you today. But first, because today's summit happens to be happening here at the university, I thought I'd take a few minutes to help you understand how modern universities, which NJIT is one example of, what we're doing and what kind of work we're doing, because the perception is not always on the money. <laughs> so, um, I thought I would just talk about this year, this fall semester, which is about coming to an end. We won't talk long, it'll be just a few minutes, but it's really an amazing place for university today. As some of you may know, NJIT began an intense, intense strategic planning process in 2013 to 2015. In 2015, with the approval of our board of trustees, many of whom were companies and manufacturers, uh, we approved a strategic plan called 2020 Vision. The plan had ambitious goals and outlined actual strategies, specific things we would do to reach them. During the past year, NJIT has implemented a number of these activities and we have gone so far as companies always do. We're not a company, we're a public but more and more modern universities are like companies, we have taken the additional step of having key performance indicators, or KPIs, to measure how well we are doing. And since we really began the implementation in 2015, and now we're 2016, I thought I would just give you some data about, very short, about what we have done a noteworthy basis. First of all, scholarly research has shown strong progress with one major thrust, among many, being manufacturing. Research is going on here about modern or advanced manufacturing. These actions have led to, in one year, an increase from about 22 million in externally funded academic research to more than 31 million. A corresponding increase in scholarly productivity as measured by the number of articles produced by faculty members has occurred as well. The work of our New Jersey Innovation Institute, our 501c3 uh, company owned by NJIT, has also yielded an increase in economic and technology activities in one year from $30 million to $42 million. So it should come as no surprise why NNJ is so pleased and thrilled to be partnering with NJII to offer you this event today. Well, beyond the strategic plan, there has been many other important developments at NJIT this fall. Progress at, on our campus, which is only 40 acres, in our transformation continues at a breakneck pace 
as the life sciences and engineering building is going up, as mm, you can sort of start seeing it around here, our event and wellness center, our essential king building, for those of you from Newark, and I just spoke to a lovely woman who is from Newark, uh, we now own the famous, and on the historic register, Central High School, now called King Central, and we are redoing it inside, top to bottom. And just opening this spring will be our makerspace, right over there, that white building over there. If we're sunny, you can even see through these screens. Um, we've also received a number of external validations in recent months, which speak to all the work that goes on in the university to make this happen. U.S. News and World Report ranking of this school has improved 15 spots among best national universities in the last three years. The Albert Dorman Honors College was ranked among the top 10 honors colleges in America in a recent publication, a book. And um, the 2016-2017, very important, pay scale college salary report rated NJIT as number one in New Jersey and tied for 16th in the country among public universities. These are STEM jobs, all of which will be happening about additive manufacturing as you hear today. I'd also like to note the success of an important event that those of you who are companies here today might want to know about. It benefits students and companies. On September 28th of this fall, NJIT hosted its Fall Career Fair, which brought together more than 2,500 students and 200 employers, resulting in an abundance of job offers, internships, co-ops, and other career development opportunities, all in the STEM area, and many in modern manufacturing. Well, this is, of course, of why we're gathered here today, modern manufacturing. To begin this exciting program, we had hoped to have Catherine Starkill talk to you about the talent networks. She will be here later. She's stuck in traffic. But instead, I bring to you the president of NJII and the brains behind so many of the manufacturing related research and development activities in NJIT, Dr. Don Sebastian. Welcome. 